This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use the Trace Bitmap feature located in Inkscape. And what Trace Bitmap does is it allows you to create a vector tracing of a photograph using an automated algorithm instead of having to trace it manually using the Bezier pen and other tools. Okay. Now, the benefit of using Trace Bitmap is that it saves you a lot of time. It creates a really quick tracing of any photograph you have. The downside of using it, though, is that it doesn't always work with every photo. Based on the composition of your photo, sometimes it produces some sloppy results. So you're never going to get a 100% accurate tracing of your photograph unless you trace it manually. But the downside of tracing it manually is that it takes a lot of time and a little bit of expertise as well. So the method you should use depends on the image you're working with and what it is you're trying to achieve. If you're just trying to create a quick, sloppy, automated vector tracing of your photo, Trace Bitmap is great for that. So let me show you how to go about doing that. I have these two example photos here. I'm gonna work with this one first. I'm gonna come over here to where it says Path. I'm gonna click on Trace Bitmap. Now if you notice up here, we have three different tabs. Trace Bitmap, Pixel Art, and Help. For this tutorial, I'm going to focus on Trace Bitmap. Pixel Art would be a separate tutorial altogether. So let's focus on Trace Bitmap for now. If you notice in here, we have two different options. We have Single Scan and we have Multiple Scans. And the difference between the two of them basically is one is for black and white, one is for color. So a single scan would create a single vector object. It would trace a single vector object over your photo in one single color. So it would be good for creating things like silhouettes or maybe even creating vector textures. Whereas multiple scans would be good for creating uh, vector tracings of photos that have a lot of color and you wanna retain some of that color. So let me demonstrate how each works. I'm gonna choose single scan for this image because this is a black and white image and I just wanna create like a, like a silhouette sort of tracing of this. Now, if you look at this dropdown over here, we have a lot of different options. And these options all, what these options do is they basically trace your image using a different sort of algorithm. And the one that you should use depends on the composition of the image you're working with because every image is different. Okay, so when you're tracing a bitmap, you're going to want to cycle through these different options and update the preview to see how it looks to find out which one is best for your photo. So for this one, I'm just going to leave the, the brightness cut off. I'm going to click update. And it shows you a preview here of the vector tracing that's going to be made from the image. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like how that looks. I'm going to click OK to create the tracing. And if you notice, it created a vector tracing over the photo. Now this here is a true vector object. You can change the color of that. You can perform path operations on that. You can do everything that you would normally do with the vector object with this right here. Let me turn off snapping. Now let me get rid of that. Let me show you some of these other options here just to show you what I mean. If you come down here to like uh, something like edge detection and you click update, you'll notice it doesn't really trace anything in the image. There's some speckles caught in the, uh, in the tracing there, but it's not really what I'm going for. So for this sort of image, edge detection wouldn't be good, but maybe for a different type of image, edge detection would work perfectly. So really, like I said, it depends on the image you're working with. So whenever you're trying to trace vectors using this tool, Make sure to cycle through these and see which one gives you the best result. Okay, see this right here as an example. If I click OK, we end up with a pretty sloppy tracing. This tracing right here, it's also got a lot of nodes in it. This is a really complicated tracing. So uh, one thing I'd like to warn you about when using this tool is to be very careful about making complicated tracings like this. Now my computer was able to handle this because I have a pretty powerful computer, but if you're using like your, your average consumer grade computer, this would probably lock up Inkscape and cause you to have to restart the application. So always be careful when you're creating tracings that you're not creating something too complicated. Okay, so let me show you now. If you go to uh, any of these options here, brightness cutoff, you have some settings that you can tweak over here, the brightness threshold. Let me update this. Right now, by default, it's at 0 0.450. If I change that to something like 0.8 and click update, it, you can see it changes the tracing. It changes the algorithm of the tracing there. There's more of the shadows being caught up in the tracing there. So this is just one of those things that gives you more granular control over your tracing. So when you're tracing an image, just cycle through these different settings, see which one works best, and then you can alter these settings a little bit to see, to really fine tune your tracing. Now this looked a lot better before at 0 0.45. So I'm gonna put that back to what it was and click update. And then over here we have invert image. If you click on that and you click update, you can see it creates an inverted tracing. If I click OK to create that tracing, it pretty much creates a vector tracing of the negative space and the subject. 
It creates a, a vector tracing of the negative space of the image, and the subject becomes the negative space of the tracing, as you can see there. Okay, so that's another thing you might want to pay attention to whenever you're tracing an image. So let me undo that. Let me show you now how to trace images with color. If I select this image right here, I'm going to click on multiple scans now because I'm working with color. And again, we have all of these different options we can cycle through. I'm going to choose colors for this one. I'm going to click update and it's showing you how the vector tracing would look in color. I'm going to click OK to generate that. And as you can see here, let me zoom in on this. If you zoom out, it looks photorealistic. But if you zoom in, you can see that this is indeed a vector tracing. And now the flaws in using auto tracing become a little more apparent because you can see there's a lot of imperfections in here. There's a lot of speckling and a lot of details that got included in there that probably shouldn't have been. But like I said, with an auto tracing, you can't expect it to be perfect. It's never going to be exact. Okay, so let me come back over here to this image. Over here we have the number of scans. Scans pretty much represent the number of colors in an image. Okay, so with this tracing, I created eight scans, meaning it's going to use eight different colors. Okay, now if I decrease that to like maybe something like three and click update, it's only going to use three colors. Okay, as you can see there. And inversely, if I increase it from eight to maybe something like 16, it includes more of the colors. And if you click OK, you end up with a bigger tracing with a lot of different options. But at the same time, it looks a little more photorealistic. And just to show you that this is indeed a vector tracing, I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup. And it's going to ungroup it into lots of different little parts here. And you could zoom in and you could take these parts and change them and do whatever you want with them. OK, and then finally, if you click on this image up here, you'll notice there's a Remove Background setting. Now, if you enable that, it's going to remove the white background from this image here. The problem with using this though is that it only works on images where the background is really defined. This image is a great example because the background is white. So it, the, the software will have no problem determining where the background is located. On more complex images, it's just going to exclude areas of the image that it thinks is the background, even if it's not exactly accurate. So let me just show you how that looks. I'm going to click update. Uh, I'm just going to click OK. And it created a vector tracing minus the background. I'm going to place it over this object here so you can see. Okay, now you get an idea. I've removed the background. Now some of it, some of it had got wrong. Like you see here, there's a little bit of negative space in there showing through. The image beneath it is showing through there. So it removes some of that as well. But that's okay because that's easy to fill in otherwise. But that's how that part works. And then finally down here we have some settings that you can play with if, if, you, if you've cycled through these options and you've played with these adjustments and you still can't get it quite right, you can adjust these as well. We Down here we have speckles that says ignore small spots in the, in the bitmap. The idea behind this is that it eliminates some of this fragmentation in here, some of these speckles. But as you can see, it's not always perfect. Maybe if I were to increase these a little bit, maybe it would do a little better job, but I'm not going to play with that for now. Over here, smooth corners, that's enabled by default. Whenever you create a vector tracing of something, usually you end up with sharp corners in your image. They end up smooth when you trace them. Okay, so uh, that's enabled by default. And then over here, optimize. Try to optimize paths by joining a paste adjacent Bezier curve segments. The idea behind that is that whenever you create a vector tracing of an image, you're creating a really complex uh, vector object with a lot of nodes in it. Let me show you as an example here. I'm going to trace this image. I'm going to click on this. As you can see, my computer is struggling with this a little bit. I'm going to click on update. I'll click OK. Now, I may regret trying this, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. I'm going to select this vector object, and I'm going to come over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Okay. Now, if you notice, this image, I mean, this, this vector object is made up of hundreds, maybe even thousands of little nodes here. Okay. Now, when you create a vector object with lots of nodes like that, um, sometimes it'll lock up your computer. The idea behind Optimize is that if you increase this threshold, it'll create less of those nodes. Okay. So that, that's pretty useful. In, in creating a vector tracing that you can actually work with without a crash in your system. But the downside is with less nodes, it may not be as accurate as a tracing. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about uh, creating vector tracings of photographs using Inkscape. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.